Okay folks, this is the final tutorial, which is finishing the game and next steps. So in here, we're gonna go to images and creatures, and we're going to take the green alien and drop it into our scene. Just place it right here. Uh, once it's in our scene, I'm gonna add a polygon collider, and I'm going to add a rigid body 2D. And on Polygon Collider, I'm gonna make sure it's a trigger. On Gravity, I'm gonna make sure that there is none. And I'm also gonna add a component for collectible to make this collectible, and it's gonna be worth one point. Then I'm gonna go ahead and test it. There we go, it's collectible. Next, now that I know it's collectible, I might go ahead and turn it into a prefab. Drag it down in here. This other asteroid is feeling like it's pretty useful now, so I'm gonna actually also make it a prefab. And then I might come back and add more aliens. I could do that by duplicating. five to win but I can always change that if I go into the user interface which I should drag to the bottom um, we can also go into the alien and to make things feel a little bit like they're floating in space I could also add the auto rotate give it a slow rotation speed go back to the scene save that press play Now, if that's happening, what I might do is I might go in and maybe I change a few of them, even though they are a prefab, I can go through and make some changes to them individually. Remembering that those ones that are in bold are gonna have that. Uh, I might also go ahead and make some rotations of my own so that they don't all start off at the same spot. There we go. And I could even do the same with the asteroids if I wanted to, or if I, wanted to, I could actually go into these asteroids and add a auto move. Now, this is the one part about prefabs that's perhaps a little bit tricky, is if I change these prefabs in this level and then I go to my other level that's using these same prefabs, any changes I make here is gonna carry over to the other one because I'm using that same prefab. Um, think of it as it's referencing a file, and if I'm changing that file, those changes are gonna cascade to, to everything. So let's go ahead and let's save that. And all those asteroids are gonna move in the same direction, but it's very slow. And so if I wanted to, I would go through and I would change the direction on all of these. And so maybe that's the game that I want to create where all of these things are moving around the scene and perhaps I'm, I'm adding more and more, so it's getting more complicated. Um, maybe these asteroids are moving too fast uh, and I wanna change these numbers so that they're moving far, far slower. But there we have, like that's essentially all the, the fun and excitement that we can have within Playground and we can build almost anything
and this framework um, would let you to let you create a player versus player, uh, a maze of asteroids, um, or anything along those lines. Um, and also because I've made all of these changes to these asteroids sort of like one by one, it's also possible for me to come in and I could just say that there is no auto move or the auto move is zero on these asteroids. And then if I save it, and then that auto move still exists and I can go around one by one and make these changes. Negative point one, point one, and all of them are still gonna move. Very, very slowly though. Okay, so that is the entirety of these tutorials. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. These are on the Moodle, obviously, because this is where you're watching them. And you can also click on the links for the written tutorials on Unity's website as well. Please let me know if you have any questions and good luck.